Yeah, man, you know it's Oja representing for Big Stone. I'm here to tell us a Big Stone bless up yourself because it's been years and still representing and still going strong. You see? You know, my song back then was school days. For I was a juvenile, you understand? I'm here to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, storybook reality. For you and for me, school days bring sweet memories from the corners of my mind. Education for you and me and all of mankind. School days bring sweet memories from the corners of my mind. Holidays mean a lot to me, but school is divine. My teacher loves to say education is the key. Work hard and play and be successful like me. Don't ever go astray. Get down on your knees and pray. Asking God to lead the way as we go along each day. School days bring sweet memories from the corners of my mind. Education for you and me and all of mankind. School days bring sweet memories from the corners of my mind. Holidays mean a lot to me, but school is divine. Yeah! <laughs> Oja representing, you know? <laughs> Blessings. Yeah, man, my real name is actually Philip Oje Ayat, but you know, to put a little twist to it, Oja, instead of OJ, I use the middle name, but you know, Ja is positive and I'm doing positive stuff, so. You know, my real name now is Oja. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to In The Streets with Big Stone. Today is a day that I feel so happy, I feel so overjoyed to see my little picnic has grown into a giant of a person that I know he was going to be when I first met him. We're talking about Philip Hyatt. I met Philip Hyatt when he was only 14 years old. This was the year 1999 at the Dr. Bird nightclub. But before we got to the Dr. Bird nightclub, it was on Reddy's Road where I first started, 15 Reddy's Road, when I first met this little youth. Walking into the, the nightclub at uh, 15 Reddy's Road, opening up his mouth with a big, 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 big voice. And I knew that this youngster was going to be a star. My intuition did not fall short. Ladies and gentlemen, he has blossomed now into Philip Hyatt international recording artist. Welcome, Philip. <laughs> uh, today is like a bittersweet moment, man, because looking back over the years when you was just a little youngster, a little youth, you know, but I know that this great big voice was there and I saw you walking with such, with such, you know, you know, with such, what you call it, confident, you know, I knew that something was going to become of this young man. I'm very happy to see you. I've not seen you in quite some time, but we speak on the phone. So I'm really very, very happy to see you once again. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it was 1999 when I had my talent competition. My talent competition was geared at that time, was to help enhance the young talents. Way before all the other people joined on board, the Digicells and Magnum Kings and Queens, they had a big stone talent exposure. I didn't have the great money to go with it, but I had the zest and I had the vision to see that if we can provide a platform from some of these youngsters, a youngster like Philip Ayat, then we know Jamaica is on the way with greatness. And we need to continue, and we have to big up Digicel, and we have to big up Magnum Kings and Queens in doing what you're doing. My idea has no more fruit. Tell us where you're from originally, Philip. Well, I'm from uh, Clarendon, Alsall Clarendon. Mm -hmm. You know, just after you pass the Alsall Great House there, before you reach the mm -hmm. So, you know, a little community named Alsall. Alsall big still. Mm -hmm. So let me, let me ask you a question. At 14 years old, you was in your school uniform. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to show you some pictures of a young 14-year-old, Philip Ayat, you know, doing his thing at that, at that time. What made you gravitate to music at 14? I gravitate to music 
at earlier than 14. You know, tell because, us, tell us, tell us how it started. Because um, my dad is a singer, mm -hmm. so I guess in the bloodline. So from age three, I can remember going to basic school mm -hmm. and stuff. I always been singing my dad's song and teachers at school always asking me, OJ, sing, sing, sing that song with me, you know? Mm -hmm. And I always been singing from that day, back then. Yes. But you know, mm -hmm. going to Sunday school and stuff, they find out at church that yeah, I could sing and everything. So, you know, I church we really start off from. Start off from. Mm -hmm. Meaning, um, at a tender age, I'm um, biggest artist and stuff mm -hmm. for gospel concerts and stuff. Sometimes even when me and my mom go like my mom couldn't really sit and really watch me sing and pay tears. So. <laughs> all right. So we know our audience are in tune right now, and we know they're watching from all over the world. Um, give us a little piece back of the early days when a young four, five, six-year-old Philip Ayat was singing in the church. Sing us one of the songs that 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 you did back in those days. Back in those days, uh, I thought. Number one would surely be me. I thought I could be what I wanted to be. I thought of myself as a mighty big name. But I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountain is so high. And the valley is so wide Down on my knees I've learned to stay Can't even walk without you holding You know? <laughs> right, right, right. I'm here sitting, ladies and gentlemen, and it's like I'm back in church listening to this great big talent of Philip Ayat. So that was your first shot, singing those big songs. Yeah, man, so you gained the confidence and singing your father's song, you gained even more confidence. Fancy. And you said you want to take it to a next level. What happened in 1999? Well, How did you get connected to Big Stone Talent Exposure? You know, um, Theodore Bradshaw is like, a t he's like more than a father and a teacher to me. Mm -hmm. As I look at you to go in the community, you know, he um, make sure he teach us music and stuff, mm -hmm. different from my dad and stuff. He always take it on another level. Like we've right. always been going to practice in the evening and stuff. So I guess I don't know how really you heard about Big Stone promotion, but he's the type of person who will bring us to all kind of competition. Mm. Big Stone promotion was one of the first. Then you know, um, Portmore Star Search, then mm -hmm. TST and all mm -hmm. them things. So. Mm -hmm. In, and make me enter Big Stone promotion first time and think even that same day we met um, Lucian it's my first time meeting Lucian he's the one who played the guitar for me at the audition and stuff yes I remember it was a really great time I can remember and I remember and I have to big up Lucian I remember that Lucian came in because what Big Stone used to do back in those days was to bring a professional artist to not just listen to the talent but to actually reason with the talent explaining to them all the business of becoming a musician, becoming an entertaining, uh, entertaining artist, and how it is for your royalties and to travel the world and so on. First time, and it was Luciano who kind of told him that, hey, I started selling orange in the market. He had no shame in his game when he said that was the first thing. bit about the JCDC competition that you was a part of what was it like for you being a part of that competition well that it's a great experience you know because you know we go all over Jamaica to perform for the people live and live in college and stuff we go Kingston and Manchester we go Clarendon we go Portland we go St. Thomas most of the parishes we go and stuff but the JCDC really helped me now to really 
let people know who Oja is real, who, who Oja is really is, you know. Mm. So the exposure is good. So what was the most exciting point of the competition? The most exciting point point of the competition was the final night. You know, we have to we have to perform for that live crowd. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you? Well, it was it was great. Never feel any nervous or anything, cause you know we had all the contestants. We bond together and we rap, so we get used to everybody and stuff. You know, you might feel a little nervous before you go up on stage, you know, when the name call and stuff. But you know, as a artist, you have ways and means how to really get rid of that nervousness by inhaling and exhaling and not thinking about the competition and stuff. Um, the competition has now come and gone. What is next for Oja? Well, my plans are to go in the studio and continue mm -hmm. do some work and stuff. Because we have a lot of songs that we really need to come out and stuff. A song, we have a lot of song called Dead Culture. The crime and violence that's really going on in Jamaica now. A song like that really needed. Give us a little piece of that because you know that is exactly what is happening. Give us a little piece. Wo mama woe mama woe de hoe Wo mama woe mama woe What a dead culture Mama older head and weep Talking about the gun culture Too much killing in the street Ooh yeah What a dead culture Blood beneath the children's feet Give us a life culture, good reggae music is what we need. In a Jamaica where life is so cheap, especially for kids on the street. It's like a game for robbers and thieves, hungry for some food to eat. False leaders who come, just give them a gun, then they start to shoot and run. When will this killing be over and done as the cycle goes round and round? What a dead culture, mama hold her head and weep. Talking about the gun culture, too much killing in the street, you know? Yeah, I love that one, I love that one. Uh, Philip, you know, um, I wish we could talk to you much longer, but I know you have your engagement, man. I really want you to stop by again so we can do more of this. Um, where can people find you if they want to book uh, Oja? You know, you can find me on Instagram and Oja Music and, you know, Facebook. Um, Oj, Philip Oja. What's your I address? What's your address on Instagram? My address is o um, Oja Music. Okay. Oja Music. That's Facebook? A, um, it's Philip Oja Ayat. Just type in Philip Oja Ayat and you can see me online. Okay. Can, Any uh, contact number or anything? You know, my contact number is... 837 7308 r 405 3032 that's 837 7308 r 405 3032 uh in parting we want to say a big shout out to yes I all the fans i want to say a big shout out to all the fans in jamaica especially big stone and i want to say my all my fans in my community theodore bradshaw and all the fans and my dad and everyone, you know, my mom, everybody who take who take my music on another level, all my fans and stuff. And we, you know, all Jamaicans. Cause you know we love you all. Cause it, you know, I listening ears to Oja music and I know you will gravitate to it. Well, Oja man, it's a pleasure having you here again with Big Stone in the street after so long, seventeen years, you know. It has been a pleasure for me and whatever I can do to help motivate you and enhance your career to the greatness that you are. It's always an honor. Thank you very, very, very much, Oja, for stopping by. Big up. Yes, Brother Stone, bless up yourself. I'm here to say, Bradshaw, big up yourself. Daddy, you're large. I'm here to tell you, so you know it's Oja representing again. Big Stone promotion, I'm here to tell you, Big Stone. It's a pleasure, man. Greetings.